MC, I like your little cup. That's cute. Thank you. Thank you. I kind of thought that the leopard print was really fun. Of course, I've already had my Max coffee this morning, and so I'm, I'm, I've had to move on. Already what? <laughs> yeah, had to move on. That's exactly okay. right. Well, James, have you had a good morning? I have. I have. It's been a, it's a beautiful morning. Got my green tea here, and um, meeting the day. It's been a good week. Good. I'm so glad. Well, yeah. MC, I think I think we can go ahead and dive in and introduce our special guests for today. I'm really I'm excited about this one as I am with all of them, but especially this one. <laughs> That's right. So, guys, for those of you who have the pleasure of knowing James Cummings, you know that you're getting ready to laugh, right? You know, you know what's coming. Right. Even though the topic of our conversation today is really not that funny, I can guarantee you. <laughs> You're going to end up laughing. Um, so I've known James. Gosh, I mean, James, I mean, God, was, that was, was that before we had kids? It was. It was. Woo, it's been a minute. Nelly. It's been, it's a, been minute. a minute. It's been a minute. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So it was a little darker. Uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 you know what? I was going to say that and then I thought too much. So anyway, I mean, I mean, James. <laughs> That's another question. <laughs> yeah. So James and his wife, Sydney, and they have two wonderful boys um, are just kind of, you know, pillars of the community. They are folks, James and, and Sydney are both lawyers. One of the things that, that I think is so interesting about James is, you know, when I remember when I first met you, James, that you said, um, you know, I, I, I'm a lawyer, but that's not really what I want to do. I'm going to figure out how to own a business. And that's something that that's really um, of interest to me. And I thought, well, I never thought about that. I've never thought about, you know, um, having a law degree and, and making the choice that that's really not what you want to do. I don't know. It just was so outside of the box for me. And that's one of the things that I love about James. And I love about my friendship with James is that I don't see him very often or get to talk to him very often, but whenever I do, there's always an exchange of really fun and big ideas. And that's something that, you know, that I cherish and that I really love. So thrilled to have James here with us today. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I thought I was going to get introduced as the person that introduced you to Carly Lockie. <laughs> I said that this morning. So funny. Earlier, we got a call with Carly Lockie this morning. That's exactly right. Y'all, I'm telling you. I mean, it's just, again, big ideas. Who knew that you could hire somebody that could help you oh, put your man. team together? and she solves and, problems. And, right. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. So thank you, James. Yet again. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. That's um, exactly right. well, I, Obviously, thanks for the intro. And, uh, I th you know, we met each other both when we kind of moved back to town. It was around 01, I guess, yeah. 02. Yeah. But uh, I'm a 1990 graduate of West Carteret, went to Carolina, went to Campbell Law School, practiced law for about eight years. Uh, and then in 09, you know, really the first, you know, when did we start our entrepreneurial journey? In 2009, my wife and I opened our, our own law firm, Cummings and Cummings in Beaufort. And that same year, we also had the bright idea to open up three great clips, uh, one in Havelock, one in Cape Carter, and one in Moorhead City. So in the span of about six months, we went all in. Uh, I guess doing the math, I was 37 back then. I definitely had darker hair. Uh, but um, it's, been a, it's been a whale of a journey. And fast forward to today, we're, you know, we're blessed to be involved. No, no long, I no longer practice law. Um, I always loved uh, the business of running a law firm, you know, just as much as I did the actual practice of law. But uh, we've, we're involved now in 46 great clips in North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Wow. Um, I'm blessed to have about 425 uh, roughly hairstylists on our team and just a great organization we've been a part of. It's been a, it's been a wonderful ride. I mean, it's obviously been a bumpy road from here to there, but uh Man, it's been it's been fun, and and really the, the best thing about it all is I get to live in Carteret County, call it home. Best That's place, the blessing. Now, Best James, I I mean I said this up front before we we started uh, this live video, but I want to kind of stand back and be a fly on the wall because these are two folks who are very um, successful entrepreneurs and people who um, I look up to. But James, I have a quick question to kind of get us started into these rapid fire questions. Sure. Um, what, did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur or a business owner? Was that something that came after uh, you kind of practiced law and fell in love with the business of it? I mean, yeah, no, you know, when I, when I was in college and right after college, no, you know, when I was waiting tables in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, no, you know, when I was building docks for Turner Marine construction or delivering gas tanks for deep, no. And, but after law school, uh, you know, we all have to grow up at some point and, uh, I got out of law school and I went to work for Warden Smith in New Bern and uh, enjoyed it, but you know, I kind of wanted to do my own thing. So I moved back to Carteret County, found a great mentor in Roger Crow, who really mm. taught me how to be a lawyer. And uh, and at that point, I, I was just I fell in love with the idea of starting my own business and uh, just kind of figured it out. But 
I'm not going to tell you that I was some kid that at 18 had a clue. I mean, no, I knew what I didn't want to do, but I had no clue what it was. I How about at 30? How about at 35? Nah, I, <laughs> no, yeah, 32, 33, maybe starting maybe. to figure it out. Yeah, that gives yeah. me hope. I, I think that's good. Just kidding. I, I still I'm, feel I'm like I'm getting married to him. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I'm still, yeah, absolutely still figuring out. And I think you're still figuring out too, James. That's one of the things I really like is always yeah. kind of looking for ways to learn, uh, re- always reading things and listening to podcasts and just really looking for more information, um, which yeah. I think is, is I think that's a secret to your success. And so since that's just my opinion, tell us what are three things that you think that people should know about owning your own business? Uh, okay. Number one, never confuse the product with the operating system. Everybody can make a better hamburger than McDonald's. So why isn't everybody a billionaire? And the answer is that the value is always in the operating system. Hmm. So whatever, whenever you start any business, if you're going to do a business, you need to make sure that you pay attention to your systems. And there's lots of them out there. But <laughs> I had to learn that message. You, you, I mean, you are killing me because, yeah, because this is, it's like you're, mm-hmm. okay. Anyway, Sorry, number right? one. Got it. Uh, number two, number two is pretty self-evident. You know, understand the difference between working in your business and on your business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's Michael Gerber, E-Myth stuff, but yep. that's very confusing in the beginning, right? You think, you know, if you start a lawn care business, when you're cutting grass, you're working in the business, right? When you're trying to decide what mower you're going to buy or marketing, that's working on your business. So make sure mm-hmm. you understand that. And then, you know, the, the one that I learned over and over and over again, I can't say this enough is, you must inspect what you expect, but if you ain't checking on it, it probably ain't happening. So that's what I would tell three people. Pay attention to the system, you know, understand the difference between working in the business, on the business, and then make sure you inspect it if you expect it. Wow. That's so good. That, those are really, really good ones. And those are ones that, that that's interesting. Those are really good ones, James. Thank you. Oh, now, yeah. along with that, tell us what's the best advice that you've ever received. Best business business advice I ever got was grow your people and your business will naturally grow. Hmm. It's really good. Truly, but you know, you help your team. If your team is 10% better and I, and I mean everything, I'm not just talking about hard skills. So in my business, it would be, you know, we're better at doing fades or we're better at doing you know, Bob haircuts. Or we're up to date on the most latest product trends. I'm not even talking about soft skills like customer service skills or greetings and, I'm talking about every aspect of the team, Uh, diet, rest, exercise, Mm -hmm. attitude, money, spirituality, help your people grow. And if they grow, if your team is 10% better at the end of the year, your business will naturally be 10% bigger every single time. Just the law of the universe. Focus on growing your team. Wow. I mean, James, it's just so good. It's just so good. Okay. (laughs) that's it's just, best. I mean, it's so good. It's like, it's like, we know this and, and I feel like Meg, I mean, I feel like these are things that we talk about and yeah. things that we, that we do. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know. I love hearing you distill it down like this, James. Me too. This is awesome. Thing, I think a lot of these things, we talk about these, the, the, the two topics we talked about so far relate to running a team, building a team, owning a business, your impact on others. But let's be clear, every single person is a leader of themselves, right? And everything that you're saying right now are things that if you invest in yourself, if you become 10% better every year, then then your output and your impact on the people around you becomes bigger and better every year. So these things all apply, right? And and, and inspecting what you expect. I mean, if if I'm gonna set a goal, am I holding myself accountable? Am I going back and making sure that I'm doing the things I said I was gonna do? So these things are not just tips for people who run teams or own businesses. These are really good life tips. Oh yeah. And the hardest person you'll ever manage is the man in the mirror yeah. or the lady in the mirror. I mean, let's For face sure. it. Yeah. Ain't nobody lying to you like you. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't I wrong. love that. I love that. That's so good. Okay. What about a really good piece of advice for a young person who wants to start their own business? All right. So I got, I got three, I got three and, I, okay. and my kids, my kids could probably repeat these. Number one, you got to read, hmm. you know, successful people leave clues behind and you know where they leave them. They leave them in books <laughs> and it's uh, you must readers or leaders. And, you know, in five years, you'll be the same person, except for the places you go, the people you meet, the books you read, but you need to read early. You need to read often. And about, if you read consistently, just 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, once a year, you'll read something that changes the way you view the world and it'll change the way you think. 
and it's just the secret. Everything I've built has come from a book and it just, you got to read that's and, 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 and it ain't on your phone. Like I tell my <laughs> kids, it's, I'm not talking about Twitter. I'm not talking about your little social media, TikTok. What? That doesn't count. I'm talking about a book. <laughs> so that would be, that would be one. Number two, I would tell young people, you are the average of your five friends. Yeah. Uh, you know, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You know, you want to be successful in business. You better make sure that you're hanging around people that are going where you want to go. Um, most important things, find a mentor, find someone that's already been there. That's one of the biggest shortcuts to success ever. And the thing is, is that if you decide that you want to be something, go find someone that's already done it and ask them for help. And I'll bet you 99 out of 100 times, they'll say, OK, yeah, they, yeah. people are always willing to help someone that, you know, they see has genuine interest. But and then the third thing I tell my kids this all the time is for if, if you're young, you need to fail forward faster. You need to fail forward faster. You know, it's easier to learn to walk when you're two. You want to learn to snow ski when you're four. You know why? Because it doesn't hurt when you fall. And the later in life you wait to start a business after you get that mortgage and you got those two kids and you got that car payment, failing in business becomes a little bit more painful. And I don't think we're as willing to take risk in, you know, at 50 or 60 as we are when we're younger. And the education system does a terrible job of teaching people that failure is bad. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. like we're supposed to get 100 on a test. That's not the real world. You, know, you, you get 60 out of 100 right in the real world and you're killing it. <laughs> uh, but the most successful people I, I, I really know are, like the, are the ones that have failed the most. It's, yeah. it's what, here's the difference. They didn't quit. They mm -hmm. weren't worried about it. And so uh, if you're young, fail forward faster. So you got to read. Be careful who you hang out with. Find a mentor. And fail forward faster. Failure is not a bad word. Failure gives you experience. Experience gives you judgment and judgment helps you make money. So fail forward. That's good. Man, those are good. So James, I know that there are a lot of things that you are proud of, including mm. your two boys who you just referenced, but, but, and, and rightfully so, heavens to Betsy. But let's go back to your career. What are you most proud of in terms of your career? You know, the team that we built, honestly, just our team, just centered around our core values. You know, our main core values create confidence, create confidence in the customer, create confidence in our leaders, create confidence in our team. My wife, Sydney, has been an incredible business partner, and she's been with me every step of the way. You know, I'm kind of the big picture person, and she's the detail one. I mean, she, she dots the I's and crosses the T's. Nothing would happen without her, ever. Mm -hmm. My business partners, Pat and Maria, are awesome. You know, we've been through everything the last 11 years. And then my executive team, Chris, Julie, Kathy, Jill, and then all of our managers, like my team, like really, really proud of my team. They, they, uh, they help us live the values every day. And it's just, it makes coming to work really, really enjoyable. That's wonderful. wow. I wow. love that. I, I love too. that. Gosh, I mean, James, I don't know. I feel like that I could just sit here and ask you questions all day long. I mean, and 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 continue to learn things and feel inspired. I don't know. I, I feel pumped. I feel pumped about my day. Do you, Meg? I 100. I feel like a yeah. sponge, and like my palms are a little bit sweaty because I'm really excited about this information. Is that weird? Uh, uh, yeah, totally. And also, I'm totally freaking out about what my kids are reading. I mean, okay, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, we're totally fine. I, I just said to Chip recently. Neither of my kids have read To Kill a Mockingbird. And I just said, oh, good book. all four of us are going to read To Kill a Mockingbird together. And of course, yeah. it was like, well, I'm already reading two other books. And I was like, you are not. <laughs> they'll, they'll read it. They read it freshman year at West Carter. Oh, good. Yeah, okay, let me see feel better. Okay. So see, thanks. Work. Thanks. Okay, good. <laughs> so, James, what is saving your life right now? Yeah, this is a good question, man. This one. Um, so, uh, look, all right, here we go. I'll, I'll give it my best. I got a couple of things here. You know, number one is, is the gift of the eternal present moment. Um, really you, 2020 was a hell of a year. It, it was, it was more than any other year or time. It was filled with so much emotion. Like people were angry. They were upset. They were confused. They were fearful, you know, uh, snapping at each other. I mean, 2020 was just an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, it was. But uh, you know, really just uh, through, my own life, just really focusing on the moment, the power of right now, because when you look at emotions, right, if you're angry, it's because you're upset because something did or didn't happen in the past. And if you're anxious or nervous, it's because you're worried about something that will or will not happen in the future. 
but neither one of those emotions really exist in the moment if you're focused on this moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what 2020 taught me was just to be still, breathe, recognize where you are and that most of your emotions are just wrapped up in things that either have happened or may or may not happen and just kind of be present. And it's, uh, it, it was 2020 was a tough year to be in the haircut business. <laughs> you know, we were shut down for 65 days and yeah. it, it just, it was a lot of, you know, we reopened, there was just a lot of fear. And um, I think that the thing that was saving my life is just trying to be more in the moment. And as somebody explained it to me one day, that's why we love dogs because dogs only exist in the moment. They're so excited to see us. And, and even we come back five minutes later, they're excited again. Like they're, they're happy to go for a walk. They're happy to sniff a tree. They literally live in the moment. I think they bring us to the moment. My dog's ears just went walk. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> so, literally right next to me. Sorry. So I think, I think that's what it's been for me is just focusing on the eternal present gift of right now. It's good. Man. That's really good. Mary Cheatham. What, I mean, I just feel like you could ride on the coattails of that one. What's saving your life right now? God, I mean, you know, I, I, it's so funny because the, these last couple of weeks, I'll be honest, I, I have not been doing a good job with the present moment at all, James. And I was just saying, I feel it. I mean, I feel it. You know, I've been getting up really early and instead of doing my meditation, instead of doing what I need to do, I get right here at this computer and knock some stuff out, you know, and it, and it, it seems really important and it makes me feel better in the moment, but it doesn't add up to a life well-lived. It doesn't add up to me really moving our business forward because without white space to think and to plan and, and to reflect on things, you know, if you just have a series of events and no time in between them to process, you're not getting better. You're not really helping anybody else to grow. That's, that's, somebody explained it to me one time, you know, they said that, um, if you think about music, there's, there's musical notes, right? Well, th there are notes, but between those notes are perfect spaces of silence. And it's the proper amount of silence between the notes that makes the music beautiful. And I think that so such it is with our thoughts and our actions. We have to find the silence and the space between our thoughts and actions or else life is just noisy. Mm -hmm. It's very noisy and it doesn't really make sense. But uh, I've always, uh, you know, I, th I think, you know, starting our day very intentionally and trying to get quiet, try to get centered, try to figure out where you are. It's amazing how the rest of the day can just flow better. But to your point, you know, I don't, I don't think we ever stay in balance. I think it's actually a one thing concept. Uh, yeah. You know, counterbalance, right. Yep. Kind of come, It comes and goes. We just have to remind ourselves that when we get a little bit out of whack that, you know, what the fundamentals are and what we come back to. Yeah. I love that. And that, that, that counterbalance, I don't know if you remember this, Meg, from, from the book, The One Thing, yeah. that it, you know, it talks about somebody on a point shoe and then it looks like that they're balanced. But if you look really closely, they're tiny, they're quivering back and forth just barely. And it talks about the fact that you have to let your business life, your work life get out of alignment in order to be successful. I mean, in other words, you have to, to set your phone aside for a little while and not answer the phone every, every time it rings if you're going to plan and get ready for the next, the next step in the next phase. But you really want to make sure that you hold your family and your relationships and those things close and never get those out of whack in the same way, yeah. which I don't know, that really speaks to me, just that whole concept of, yeah. of, of balance and counterbalance. I love that. Well, so, so I think to, to tie mine up with a bow, I think it's, I think maybe, maybe what's saving my life right now is having this conversation with you guys, you know, is, is just, hey. you know, giving me a little nudge that I needed um, to kind of come back to, to where I need to be so that I can, I can, you know, be the optimal me that I can be right. Cause I know that, that, that really matters. I don't want to look back and regret it. Yeah. So gosh, that got deep. Meg is yours going to be like, <laughs> I, 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 it I won't be lasagna this that, week. So. It's not going to be lasagna this week. <laughs> okay. um, I, I mean, I have to agree with you. I think this, I had something that was saving my life, but I very quickly switched it when this conversation started because what a lucky little bird I am to be sandwiched. I mean, I'm in the middle of the zoom on my screen to be sandwiched in between two people who are full of so much wisdom. And, and I'm sure you guys get it a lot, but you guys are very similar in the way that you lead. It sounds, James, I've never been on a team of yours, but Mary Cheatham does a lot of similar things as what you um, kind of spelled out for us today. And, and just to wrap it up, the one thing that you said, um, I think it was number two on your list for your kids about who they surround themselves with. And um, that's kind of the, um, that's who they are, the five people they surround themselves with. And I feel like in the past, I don't know, 20 minutes, I got to be surrounded by you guys. And I feel like I'm on my high horse. I'm pumped about <laughs> it. So thank you guys for letting me be a fly on the wall. That was really, really, really Man. cool. I'm going to rewatch it, take some notes. 
Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, great. James. Oh, Thank yeah, you for being here, man. I, yeah, this was really good. This yeah. was really good. And, and James, if we can, um, maybe after we wrap this up, can we go back and add some comments below on a few of your favorite books and podcasts? That'd be sure. awesome. Absolutely. Great. Sweet. Perfect. Okay. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks, Thanks so much. James. Bye, Mary Cheatham. Bye.